So you call me. Come on, Rusty. I'll keep him straight. There you go. He's going to keep you straight.
feel sorry for you. Though. No, you don't. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. It's not been rusty for a long time. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, we're here to discuss uh, uh, the upcoming budget and uh, see if we can all agree on things to, to, to move forward with the town. So with that, uh, I'm opening it up. Uh, Gene, take it from there. Can you hear me now? Test, one, two, three, test. So there's two things that generate fund transfers. So there's ongoing activity, and this would be transfers between the government fund and the business type funds. And the two causes of that are our service fee receipts, which would be water and sewer services, which are transfers from the government fund to the business type funds, and then expense reimbursement from the business type funds to the government type funds. So this is where the general fund has paid something on behalf of the water department or the sewer department, so that's the reimbursement back to the general fund. There's also, when there's a uh, shortage in the general fund, which would always be a transfer from the business type funds into the general fund. This is the result of the government fund revenues not covering the government fund expenses. And what makes up the government fund is the administration, planning, police, and public works. The other two departments, water and sewer, are the business type funds. So um, there was a request on what, there's not one item that causes it to happen. It's when we have to transfer between the two. So that's the adjustment you see on the financials for the transfers in and out. So if you look at consumer price index, which is the um, impact on prices that we pay for goods and services, historically, since the beginning of them tracking the consumer price index, it averages 2.5%. Here you can see where the lowest we've had in the last couple of years was 2008, where I believe it was just above 0.0%. And in 2021, where the 1231 consumer price index was 7%. So keep in mind utilities, gasoline, paper, uh, cleaning chemicals, anything we use on a regular basis have gone up in that last year by 7%. 
unemployment rate. So we're fortunate in Delaware that uh, for Sussex County, we're actually just slightly above what the U.S. is and we're slightly below what the Delaware unemployment rate is. Unemployment is important because that's what affects people's ability to potentially pay for the utilities or the services they consume from the town. So that's why that one is being tracked. Single family housing data. Now this is data for the Georgetown 100 based on real estate, real estate sales. So as you can see, if you look back at 2014, we had very few units being sold and the days on the market was above 140. We are now in a reverse. Days on the market is approximately 40 and the, press, the um, units being sold is a 140. So we've flipped. So there's fewer homes on the market and they're selling faster than they were previously. Also, if you look in that same time period, what's happened to the median home sales price. So in 2021, the median home price was greater than what was in 2007, 2008. And that's important because if you think back to the real estate crash, 2000, 2007 and 8 is when it um, started to show. The sales price is what directly impacts the next slide, which is the realty transfer tax that's collected. So if you remember, we had very high median household prices, 2007, 2008. That's where you see the realty transfer tax above $400,000 each of those years. For fiscal year 2022, so far we're just above 300,000. Keep in mind that 2009 through 2013 was the um, reset, if you would, of the real estate market, and we were slow in collecting. Okay, if you look, and we reported this last night from a property assessment, almost constant, we've seen some growth in 2021, 2022, and some anticipated in 2023, but it's been consistently just above 60,000 for the total assessable base. Then you have what's taxable is the green line on the top, which is just a little bit over $50 million. And then what's been constant, probably since um, we've been tracking this number, is what is exempt, and approximately 25% of the town is exempt from property taxes being made up of state, county, schools, uh, nonprofits, et cetera. Property taxes that have been billed, so we have a collection here from 2012 to 2023, and we're assuming right now that for 23 it'll be the same as 22. We did do property tax rate increases we did $0.08 cents in 2007, $0.10 in 2010, I'm sorry, $0.40 cents in 2010, $0.21 cents in 2012, and we did $0.03 cents in 2015. From a delinquency standpoint, and this is, goes back, our oldest delinquency is 2014, and the total delinquency as of the end of February was just over $12,000. The total delinquency is less than 1%. So we've done a great job at collecting most of the delinquencies or properties. Um, 208 Rosa Street comes to mind where the house has been vacant, there's no heirs, it's just sitting idle, so it's accruing taxes on a regular basis not being paid. Our budget history, so this looks back fiscal year 16 through fiscal year 2022. So the green line is the revenues. The red line is the expenses, and then the yellow line is the transfers between the funds. If you remember, we talked at the beginning of the presentation. Next slide talks about our staffing history, and then this looks for 2012 for 10 years. So our staffing has remained fairly consistent. Um, there's, and this is staffing including all positions. So there's 21 sworn officers plus an administrative person in the police department, so that's why you see 22. Uh, for administration, it's been fairly consistent since 2019. Planning and zoning has been the same since 2013. <coughs> Police department fluctuates. Uh, public works has been the same since um, 2014. Sewer department's been the same since 2018. And the water department's been the same since um, 2013. Now, there was a lot of discussion on... Um, how uh, salary increases do or do not happen. So this shows you a history of salary increases, and this applies to non-bargaining unit employees, so it's everyone except for the police department. 
Every year at the beginning of the new fiscal year, all employees that are general receive the 1231 consumer price index increase. So if you see in fiscal year 12, it was one and a half percent. Additionally, on their anniversary date, they get an additional 2%. So in fiscal year 2012, all general employees received a 3.5% increase. If you go across what's projected for fiscal year 2023 with the 1231 consumer price index at 7%, that would go in effect on May 1, and an additional 2% on their anniversary date. So all general employees would be receiving a 9% increase. Keep in mind last year, the CPI was 1.4%. You add that to the anniversary 2%, and then council voted an additional 2% on top of that. So in fiscal year 2022, all employees received a 5.4% salary increase. State aid that we received, there's pretty much four areas. Municipal street aid is one of the largest and the most important for what gets done visibly here in the town. And I always point out to fiscal year 2010, when the state took it from $6 million to zero. It happened in our case after our budget had already been approved because we start our fiscal year on May 1. This took place on July 1. So that year we were already $165,000 in the hole without us having any control over it. The next largest one that we have coming in is the um, Court of Chancery for everything that's filed there. There's a portion of the filing fee that comes back to the town. So it's a variable in that if there's not a lot of cases, there's not a lot of municipal courthouse revenue. If there's a lot of cases, then there's a little bit more revenue. And then Sally and Edie are tend to be fixed amounts. That's for um, illicit drug interdiction. And um, I think Sally's for like undercover operations and things like that. Enhancement, okay. And, okay. and then the other piece is the county seat package. Um, I'm sure everybody has seen uh, Representative Briggs King explanation. It's a uh, done by statute. So uh, city of Wilmington gets 100% of the assessed value. Dover and Georgetown get 30.8% of the assessed value. It's done by formulary and it's capped at $3.9 million spread between three. As of last year, it was 3.88, I believe. So there is 19,000 additional dollars that potentially could be distributed unless the General Assembly modifies the legislation on the payment in lieu of taxes. That is correct. Okay. It's been introduced in every session for the last five years, and that's usually done by um, Mr. Bombach from Newark or Senator Sicola. And keep in mind, Senator Sicola is the Senator Pro Tem, so he probably has the support to do it. It does impact, um, well, everybody knows when the Chrysler plant shut down, that was Newark's largest taxpayer. So as a result of that, they lost a chunk of revenue. So now that the state, or in the case, this case, the University of Delaware, exempt properties make up the bulk of it, the legislation's very crafty in how it just carves out the city of Newark to be included in it. City of Dover and the city of George, and town of Georgetown have expressed our opposition to it because the fear is once you start opening it up, then what's gonna be the next thing that wants to be added to it? And really, it's intended for the three county seats, Wilmington, over in Georgetown. So if you look at the next slide, <clears throat> this is our realty transfer tax account. Now if you remember, I said back in 2007 and 8 were the two years we had realty transfer tax well over $400,000 each year. All of that realty transfer tax money was put into the operating budget and spent. There was nothing set aside for into the future. So in 2009 and starting with 10, we determined that we were going to set aside our realty transfer tax and not put it in the operating budget. So if we got to a point where we had some crisis or we had a shortfall, we would have a resource to take money from. 
So as of February 28th, the balance in the realty transfer tax account is $1.7 million. We have used this money um, when we started the savings. There was an agreement with the police department. Then we reached a certain threshold. We would put a new roof on their building, which is what we use that fund for. So it was not funded through a tax increase or affecting other operating parts of the town. So some of the successes that we've had is um, when we do our budgeting, we're very conservative on our revenue estimates. Uh, the worst thing you can do is be aggressive and then not realize them, and then you've already started off with a, uh, a problem. <coughs> Two years ago, we were successful at refinancing some of our debt. That afforded us to uh, reduce the time in a number of years that we had the outstanding debt. And it also generated some savings. Uh, we've, done, we've been working with ongoing efficiency improvements, um, things like the um, paperless work order system, the integration between work orders, field work orders, and um, asset essentials, asset management plan. And then um, in 2008, we introduced a purchasing card. We tend to use that for major purchases, some of the smaller purchases, so it reduces the number of checks we have to write and at the same time, for every purchase, we get a 5% rebate. So for fiscal year 2021, the rebate was uh, just under $4,000. But since we started this program in 2008, we've gotten back $65,302. So the initial fiscal year 2023 budget has total revenues of $7.4 million. General fund revenues are three point, uh, well, actually $4 million. Water revenues are 1.4 million, and then wastewater revenues are 2.1 million. On the expenditure side, as of the first draft, the general fund expenses are 5.8 million. The water fund expenses are um, just under 1 million at um, 0.98 million, and the wastewater fund expenses are 2.1 million. Total expenditures are 8 million. 800,000, which generates a deficit of $1,455. Some significant items that were presented over the last several weeks as members of council have heard um, presentations from the various department heads. So with respect to personnel, we did have a request for a customer service representative to be added to the town hall staff to assist the planning department. And keep in mind, part of that is to stop incomplete applications, um, plans that come in, the things that are creating problems once they get into the building and make it so that then there's additional work and we have to send applications back or recheck things. So this will stop it before it gets into the building. Uh, we did, we were requested to do a uh, salary review and this was a salary review of all general employees because we had just finished with the bargaining unit for the police department so we've done uh, very in-depth analysis of all of our competing departments or departments within comparable size. So we did look at other municipalities and compared our pay scale to their pay scales for similar positions. So uh, this would be done and it was to determine our competitiveness with other municipalities. We did take into account there is um, Senate Bill 15 with Senate Amendment 1 that was approved or, and signed by uh, Governor Carney in the first half of the 151st General Assembly, which has minimum wage going to $15 per hour effective January of 2025. And it's a, a slow phase in, so each year between the time it was enacted until you reach 2025, there's a step up that gets you to the 15. And based on that, if we were to adopt a new pay scale that's competitive with other municipalities, as the data showed, there would be an additional $114,000 impact on the operating budget, which is not included in the deficit you just saw on the previous slide. Next one is a significant item from personnel in the police department. We currently have four recruits that are in the academy. They're doing well. We have one recruit that we've extended an offer to. He'll be starting the academy in April. We have ongoing recruitment. Um, in the past, we used to have 
maybe once or twice a year we would open up we're doing a rolling recruitment so anytime someone's interested in applying for a position with the police department we accept it and currently with uh, one officer who gave notice that he was going to the Delaware State Police we have three vacancies um, we were asked to look at the various fees that the town charges for things and to come up with what areas might make sense to either increase or change so there was a few on the existing fees that we charge um, in looking at chapter 98 our inspection fee for public works is currently 35 we would recommend that go to $100 a reinspection fee for public works when they have to come out and do something a second time is currently $50 we would move that to 100 both of those would be consistent then with the cost that we charge somebody for a uh, town employee service which is $100 per hour Stage rental fee, we currently do a $200 in-town rate and a $500 out-of-town rate. We would uh, recommend that we consider making it $400 for in-town and $600 for out-of-town. This would cover the cost of the staff that relocates it, as well as any wear and tear on the stage, utility, or um, not utilities, fuel, tires, etc. The caution I have on that is the stage is used by a lot of nonprofits, and even with the $200 in-town rates for some of them, it's a struggle to get that money. Um, certainly, we need to discuss a property tax rate increase, but that's the collective wisdom of the mayor and council. Um, some introduction of new fees, things we do not currently have. Uh, the town of Millsboro does charge a municipal facilities building fund impact fee. Their fee is 100, I'm sorry, $1,500 per EDU. Um, we had some good discussion. Does that apply just to new large communities? Does it apply to infill? So if you add a bathroom and another bedroom to your house, potentially you could pick up another EDU. So you might have some additional expenses that could be looked at negatively. Uh, we do do temporary COs. The temporary COs are generally related to a uh, project that's in a hurry to get open and didn't finish the parking lot, didn't finish the plantings. So as our staff goes out, does an inspection, types up what's left to be required and issues a temporary CO. We currently do not charge for that. So introduction of a $50 fee to get that might be suitable. And then for the issuance of a permanent certificate of occupancy, $25. The difference there is a permanent one, if you go out just one time, you've done a, a temporary CO, you're gonna go out once and you're gonna have to go back out again for the permanent. And then there are some municipalities that do charge for a, a zoning verification letter. Um, we always advise any project that's interested in doing anything in this town before they sign a contract for the real estate is to come to the town, get a zoning verification letter. It tells you, informs you of what the zoning district the property lies in and what can and cannot be done based on the zoning district. So a critical piece. Uh, $20 may or may not be something worthwhile. And then uh, an innovative thing that we found in another municipality is there's actually an incentive to take a rental property into owner-occupied ownership. So it's something that benefits the person purchasing the property to live in it versus it being a rental. So something to consider on that one. Uh, we had some proposed capital expenditures uh, from the police department. Uh, there was a request for a new motor unit, uh, $25,000. Um, this is one of the things I think um, as um, Interim Chief Holm has identified as a way to perhaps attract some newer blood into the department as well as provide an incentive for some of our existing officers that are certified as motor officers. Uh, Public Works put in for a new pole shed. $320,000 replacement of the street sweeper, outright purchase of $250,000, replacement of a 2016 Explorer, $43,000, new gas pump at the maintenance yard, $17,200, and a new lawnmower for $13,000. Continuing on with capital expenditures, wastewater did put in for $40,000, and that was to get a new tractor and a new golf cart for use at the wastewater treatment facility. So con some considerations as we go through this, uh, certainly potential legislative impacts. Uh, Governor Carney's proposed budget was very aggressive. This year uh, with the cash surplus, 
there is a push to fund one-time expenses versus recurring expenses because once you've done it with the recurring, you have to find the money for the next year. So the push has been on one-time things that get accomplished items either through um, capital expenditure or uh, improvement to an asset. Uh, the general employee pay scale, we talked about that. That was the survey of salaries with other towns, um, the minimum wage increase uh, to be competitive and the change the pay scale in 2023. And then again, that $114,000 impact for doing that. So a review of the town's debt. Our total debt right now is $6,327,000. 13.36% of that is the water department. The debt there is $264,297. The next largest or the next piece of debt is the sewer department. That's 65.36%. The total debt there is 4223000 And then the final piece of debt is the town hall renovations and the annex building, and that was 21.28%, um, and the current balance on that is $1.8 million. And I believe we're in year three of paying that, three or four. But keep in mind, we got very good rate from USDA. I think it was two and a quarter percent. And... Uh, for 40 years, I think, under community facilities. Certainly something we probably will never see again, at least in my lifetime. Some recent events. Obviously, we are the recipient as a non-entitled unit of the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, that generated direct payment to the town of $4.1 million. We've earmarked it for projects in the water department for elevated storage at the SCI uh, facility and also for advanced metering infrastructure and on the sewer side, repair and maintenance at the um, wastewater treatment facility and rehabilitation of our pump stations, which is long overdue. Uh, we did receive some money in the one-time bond bill appropriation that was done in January, and that was funding, I think it was $65,000 towards a salary, Sally Port at the PD. And then as was reported last night at the council meeting, the General Assembly changed the way you go about community reinvestment, so um, we're in the process of evaluating projects that potentially could fall under that category that we could then submit. So just some major projects that we have either in the works or on the horizon. We're, we continue to work on the rehabilitation of North Race. This is going from Pepper Street to Douglas Street. Funding could potentially be through municipal street aid or community transportation funds. Um, that's a section of the road that has no curb sidewalk gutter, so we're trying to improve that. Uh, the sewer redirection and water connection with the county, this is leveraging two ways with Sussex County, the ability to change the direction flow at the Stevenson Lane wastewater treatment plant to take the pressure off of Stevenson Lane, I'm sorry, take it off of Cedar Lane and intercept it at Stevenson Lane and direct it through the county to Artesian's plant outside of Milton. And then we're doing a water connection from the county at the airport to join the town so that in the event we have a reason that we have to either shut down our water or we need to supplement our water, we have a connection point. Vice versa, if the county has something happen to their water, we have the ability to supply them water. We do have two environmental projects that are currently um, underway. Uh, one is the King Street Water Facility. Obviously, the announcement with it going on to the EPA's national priority list, that will bring additional resources. Um, we're getting some very good press coverage of what the EPA is proposing and what's happening there. There's some questions that are coming in, but so far there's not been anything that I've seen that's been of any concern or negativity. And then we're going to have to figure out exactly what needs to be done with the former Georgetown dump site on Donovan's Road. We do have, we're fortunate to have projects being done by DelDOT. Uh, this spring they should complete the Georgetown Gateway East improvements. Um, Aero Safety Road, we had the pre-construction meeting today. Uh, that one's a $14 million project. And after phase one, phase two will be the further extension. And then um, in the planning stage and funding stage is the Route 18404 grade separated intersection. So a couple things to remember, cash is king. The importance of building and maintaining reserves is paramount. Um, as you see in the slides where the realty transfer tax went to zero almost overnight as a result of the real estate market. 
And keep in mind that once money is borrowed, the need to replenish doubles. You have to put back the money you borrowed, and you have to find the money to replace what you didn't have the funding for. Deferral does cost more. The postponement of tax rate in taxes and rate increases generally results in larger, less palatable increases. And the need for capital improvements is not decreasing. Um, what I will say on the deferral piece is we're very fortunate with the American Rescue Plan money. It comes at a great time for us to get all of our pump stations done. From a sewer standpoint, I think after the pump stations are done, essentially we have almost a whole brand new sewer system. And once we get advanced metering infrastructure, we will essentially have a completely brand new water system. So they'll last as the assets that are invisible for a long time into the future. Um, and just some financial issues. Our operating costs do increase annually. We do have an ability to manage to some degree, but certainly things like supply chain issues, increases in price in petroleum, and how it trickles down to us, not necessarily something we can control and just recognize that some of those items are outside of our control. With respects to uh, property tax increases, we say this every year, we should consider an annual increase. Uh, a couple of reasons, one is it avoids negative press impacts. Uh, the press doesn't say your taxes are going up five cents, they'll generate the percentage and it sounds like they're going up 25%, which really is not a uh, significant amount, but the way the media can spin it, it does. And uh, if you do it on an annual basis, then you minimize the magnitude of your increase. Uh, obviously, if you do it every year, it's easier for residents to adjust. Uh, smaller incremental increases are always more palatable. If you keep in mind your cable bill, your telephone bill, your electric bill, they go up every year. Um, you don't have a ability, you can change your supplier, but I think the distribution is still Delmarva Power or Delaware Co-op. But those costs go up because they're a business and the cost of doing business goes up so they pass that on to the consumer. It does eliminate the catch up after two or three years of higher cost. And every one cent that we increase our property tax rate generates $5,000 revenue. So one of the slides we added this year is just so folks can see how um, some things are affecting our budget. So if you go back to 2013 and look at police fine revenue, and um, if you see this, the blue line that is, or the blue bar, that's what we budgeted and then what we actually collected. So uh, back prior to um, 2014, we were, budge we were uh, budgeting about 100,000 and we were bringing in 152,000 and then it's gone down a little bit. We had a spike in 2017 and then it's steadily gone down. And for our current fiscal year, we budgeted just over um, 65,000 and we're at 41,000. So our next steps would be to review and discuss line item detail budget, review and discuss and agree on items to address the deficit, and then hopefully present and adopt a uh, fiscal year 2023 budget at the April 25th town council meeting. So at this time, we can start our line-by-line -line review. And then if anyone has any questions on anything in the presentation, we can certainly address that as well.
into this new budget? Well, if you think of it this way, we Wait, my budget for twenty grand to spend this year, and I spend fifteen. What do you do with the other five? Well, no. So back in the day, we used to encumber money. So what happened was, um, at the end of the year, people would do POs to encumber that money, so we could spend it next year. That's not the case. Guess what? If you don't spend all what the, um, you expense, then we're starting off the new year great because we didn't spend all that we were expected to. Well, that's my so problem. that is starting off. How much are we starting off?
out of their summer program that are interested in law enforcement and say, hey, here's an opportunity. You've got some basic. That's the key. That's the key. And that was the point of bringing that up was that 
So I think uh, th this past this past year, I think we got around forty six hundred in uh, salary fund, and I think we got just slightly more, like uh, fifty two hundred in the drug emergency drug fund. So salary funds can be used to uh, supplement income. Of course, you're not going to do a whole lot of that with you know forty three hundred dollars, but uh, or buy equipment. 
How would that's that work? That's $5.29. How would that work, Gene, with the assessment from the county if my house is, say, appraised at 280 and then all of a sudden the county comes back and says it's under 240? Yeah, so when the reassessment takes place, we'll get that data, and what we'll have to do is adjust our rates so we don't see an increase. Okay. I think it's, it's either 12 months or 18 months. You cannot change your rate to get an increase in the revenue. Okay. Yeah. So what will happen is as those values go up, yeah. the rate's going to go down. 
say, I'm telling you right now, I was driving in my personal vehicle down West Market Street, and they're not going anywhere near 25 miles an hour coming off that highway. Mm -hmm. So there are places they can go. The, the other thing, we, if I, was, I was sitting in my police car, uh, and I was about seven cars behind the start of the left turn lane on West Market Street. Seven cars before I had even started to get wide enough. Somebody four cars behind me passed on the no passing zone to get up to that turn lane. So obviously, if they got pulled over, it happened to be a teacher at that school. Um, but the bottom line here is, but the bottom line here is, it happens. Someone can sit down there and write 20 tickets in, a, in a two hours. Uh, but so what I'm saying is, what what the, the challenge for the next leader of the police department is, is people have to. Not just a number. They're not just somebody who who has to go do something and risk their life. They, they are appreciated, and with that, that morale will increase. And with that increase in morale, people will want to go out there and do these things. Um, just recently, I had two officers who I'm not saying anybody's lazy, so that's not what I'm saying here. But two officers who have been shy with the traffic uh, citation. Well, it was a day they weren't getting many calls on the radio, and one challenged the other one, and next thing you know, they're out on West Market Street having a good time, chumming it up. One would get one, and the other one would get one. And it wasn't, they weren't making things up. These, these are things that are happening, but that's the kind of stuff to, to the OHS mobilizations that we have. So the officers need, hey, it's not costing the town any money except for maybe benefits. But those tickets that they're writing on those mobilizations, that revenue comes into the town as well. So, so those are people working extra time to bring in the money. So that's why I always I have a real good relationship with all the people at the Office of Highway Safety. We do grant money every single mobilization. Uh, they're buying us some new uh, PDT units now, which are the portable threat test units. So, so that's a that's something that we're paying them extra time to be in here. So I think that's, we just need to, it, it needs some stability. They need to get, whoever's going to be in charge needs to get in charge. And then hopefully the group will move in, in one direction, get some people back in the boat, start doing some good proactive activities. And, and that will result in revenue, not for the purpose of revenue, but that's going to result in revenue. And I, I, I got to admit, I've seen a lot more activity here lately in Blaine's on people being stopped. So I know they're out there. Still, it, officers have been getting beat up in the news, and this has nothing to do with anybody in this room, but beat up in the news so bad that when they pull somebody over, they want to feel, they want to feel good. They want to make friends or give a good uh, uh, feeling to that person with that contact. And so that's where these warnings are coming in. So instead of writing a ticket, because I, I, I got to say, as an example, careless driving. It's a $25 fine that comes back to the, to the town. But it's an 80-some dollar fine because of the fees and the surcharges that the state tax on there. So, uh, so anyway, so we're, they did a study a number of years ago, the Chiefs of Police did a study, and the state of Delaware makes hand over fist more money off of municipalities writing tickets than the municipalities make. Um, so, so that's a dynamic that's out of our, our control here, but really it comes down to uh, we have safety concerns, our guy, our gals, people, our officers, they want to give a safe environment for the people, but, but here recently and not so recently in the past, just it's been horrible. People haven't even wanted to come to work. Uh, so I see some changes in that. I see a bunch of people holding their breath waiting to see what's going to happen and, and where the direction we're going to be going. And so I think that uh, once that decision is made, there will be some, some positive change in, in the group. Bobby, can we make one more year out of the current street sweeper we have? We can make the sweeper out one more. I think so. And then uh, um, I think there's $370,000 for a new pool building. And what is it? 320. 320. Before we commit to that, if we look at it, there's not other solutions. Maybe look at that and see if 
cushion. So I think more conversation, we need to have more conversations to understand potentially um, where, or to understand or have more conversations around where we need to go with the tax increase um, so that we don't even sit there and then have to come back to people um, and perhaps getting feedback because what they're giving to us is essentially bare bones what they're going to need to 
can sell the bobcat in the tractor and yes. help offset the 40 grand. We also have a car running loader that goes on the bobcat that we can sell. So if we want to do that, but we've got many SUVs that are going to have to go and make the job. The market's hot. Now it's time to get rid of it. You want to get rid of it? There's space gears. There's space gears. Can you talk to me? Error. Yes. <laughs>
satisfactory, unsatisfactory, mm-hmm. and excellent or good, excellent, whatever it is. And it didn't make a difference. But it's really hard. And, I mean, I'll take from a bigger organization. It's really difficult and they can always complain and then go through the briefings and all that. Oh, yeah. So that's why the supervisor said, well, give them the excellent, get them out of my face. Mm-hmm. So, well, and help me understand with how you work it in Greece, where you are, we, we just talked about the employees. What's the threshold? Is there a minimum, mid range? Is there a range? So, yeah, the, so we have probably like 15 grades, I think, right now, and there's 30 steps. Mm-hmm. So, grades, uh, basically, so maybe just one, say, say, say it starts at two, one. Grade two, level one. Okay, I'm 
problem, send something to Dean, and he'll come back in here again. If not, we'll just.